with no come together as God's holy people in this sacred time and the great celebrations of our church are drawing closer and closer so let us prepare by this great celebration of the gift of the Eucharist we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen may the grace and peace of God our Father the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred and divine mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, the greatest to the least, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt. Of my sin, cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart, create for me, O God. And a steadfast spirit, renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence. And your Holy Spirit, take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became a source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, 
the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If I ask you to take a moment as we begin this new week in the season of Lent to remember an event or an experience that had an impact on your life, what would that be? I'm sure that like many, we can recall certain experiences that were incredibly powerful, that may have changed the course or direction of our lives. It might have been the discipline of a teacher. It might have been a place that you never expected to visit. There is power in our memory. If I asked you to now think about someone who has hurt you, I'm sure that that memory will flood back. Sometimes it may unearth some real pain. For when a person hurts and disappoints, when things are sad, they can stay with us. And sometimes we hold on to them and sometimes 
we harbor them. Today, in our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet announces a new covenant that is being offered by God. It will be unlike all the other covenants. He will not only place his law in our hearts, but he'll be known because he remembers our sin no more. Can you imagine? God remembers our sin no more. There is nothing more transforming than that. God remembers our sin no more. That is so transforming and life-giving. So oftentimes we, we walk through life, sometimes reminiscing about past hurts, sometimes not letting go of something that happened 10, 15, 20 years ago. And that pain continues to trap us, to imprison us. Sometimes we feel our sin itself imprisons us. And yet today, this new covenant that is revealed is one that tells us that our sins will be remembered no more. That is transforming and life-giving. It's hard to imagine that with all of our sinfulness and, and, and all of the things we've done wrong, that God offers us a covenant where he remembers it no more. From the greatest to the least, he remembers our sin no more. And invites us to be a people who also offer that gift to others. What we receive, this incredible gift that our sins are remembered no more, also is a challenge for us to share that life and that love and that forgiveness with others. And that's not easy to do. There is power in our memories. We were able to recall people who hurt us and maybe some that we hurt. Can you imagine what it's like, the freedom that that is? When sin is remembered no more. Nothing more powerful than that. And it's up to us to, to trust that and believe it. To let it go and not define our lives. Because God doesn't define us by our sinfulness. But defines us by his grace, his covenant, and his love. Jesus at the Last Supper will say, this is the new and eternal covenant. This blood that is to be shed for us, for our sinfulness. And God will not only forgive us, but remember our sin no more. There was a story about two monks who were on their way back to the monastery. They had been away for a bit on a pilgrimage and they were just talking up a storm on their way, on their way home, about all that they had seen and, and all that had been transpiring, how their faith had been moved. And then as they were heading down the trail, they came to a river. And at the river they encountered a young woman who was there who needed to get to the other side. She asked for help. The current was moving quickly. She couldn't swim. She asked for assistance. And so the one monk, without hesitation, got down on all fours and allowed her to put her legs over the shoulders, and he hoisted her up. And off he went to transverse the river. When he got to the other side, 
he lowered her down. She was thankful and went on her way. The two monks were traveling in a different direction, and they too went on their way back to the monastery. And yet, there was a deafening silence between the two of them. And as they walked further and further, the time continued to elapse. And it had been in a whole hour, and still not a word. Just some stares and some glares. Finally, as it was approaching the second hour of silence, the one monk asked the other, what is this about? Why are you so angry with me? And the monk said, well, you know that we weren't supposed to talk to anyone that we were encountering outside the monastery. And even more than that, you picked her up and you took her across the creek. Why did you do that? You know it's against the rules. And the monk who had done the lifting looked back at the other and said, I put her down two hours ago. Why haven't you? It is hard for us to trust forgiveness. It is hard for us to believe that our sins are not only forgiven, but remembered no more. We're invited in this week to recall those moments of pain and suffering and to share freedom and liberation and allow others to know their sin, their brokenness, can find healing with the Lord and be remembered no more. As a holy people of God, we now raise up our common belief. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people now, in this journey and pilgrimage of Lent, we place our petitions before our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church that it may continue to be a place of forgiveness and healing for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who 
will celebrate reconciliation for the first time as a sacrament in their hearts. We pray that they may trust the forgiveness offered and given. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for all leaders of nations that they may find common ground. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all families who feel broken. We pray for those who feel no healing can come or they feel abandoned. That the Lord's presence may be found in their midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for first responders. We pray for all those who help out in hospitals and nursing homes that face the virus each and every day. That they may be renewed with courage and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those involved in education. We pray that they may continue to be strengthened on their journey and persevere with safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the prayers that you brought with you, those that have been placed on our altar, and those that we hold on to deeply now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we are grateful for this new covenant that comes to us. We are thankful for the gift of forgiveness that was won for us by your Son, our Savior, on the cross. Guide us on this journey that we may forgive others as you have forgiven us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to be right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the paschal feasts with joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly, intent on prayer and on works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, 
they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit. That they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with this greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. And as he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Breaking the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through the blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
but blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly now commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wounds of corruption and made fully into a new creation, may we sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us take a moment and share and make peace with those who surround us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Next week, we begin a week called Holy. We will celebrate the life-changing mysteries that remind us that our sinfulness has been paid by the price of a divine Savior who died for us. Next weekend is Palm Sunday, in which we traditionally bless palms and distribute them. We will be doing that at all of our celebrations of Eucharist. We also invite those who connect with us in many different ways, electronically. We invite you also to come to the doorway of the church and we will have those blessed palms available. It is the sign of the triumphant entrance of Jesus our Savior into the holy city. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.